Hello, and welcome to Pressing Buttons. I'm Hugo. I'm Nick. Another great week, another great episode coming at you. Uh, thanks for joining us on episode 53 of Pressing Buttons. Good to be here. And uh, we're rolling on, baby. Uh, it's, it's a good year. <laughs> what? It's a good year. Yeah. yeah okay. uh, it's been a good just, year so far, just, and it's only just getting get, better. Let's get into the damn agenda. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to throw you off, so that's why I said that. Uh, quick little PSA public service announcement. We are having a Destiny 1v1 tournament, which will be going on a little bit later on today. We're recording on Sunday. It'll be going on on Sunday, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, it was brought on by the community. Shout outs to Caesar, uh, Keezy, Felix, Roast. Uh, they were able to put up the tournament. Shout outs to. To all of these guys, uh, they worked in, in setting up the poster and everything like that, and the prizing. Uh, we're basically doing a, a giveaway for, I mean, not a giveaway. Uh, the price is going to be basically Lightfall. So as everybody knows, because I love Destiny, and most of our community on Discord is Destiny-related, uh, Lightfall is coming out on the 28th. It's a new expansion with all the with new season. Um, and we wanted to do a little tournament to kind of celebrate that and, and give... Lightfall expansion to the winner of the tournament. So, uh, shout out to everybody for coming through last minute and, and setting this up. We'll see how this goes. We will have the video on demand on our YouTube channel as soon as we're, we're done with this. And Nick and I will be commentating. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, I, so. I heard. I heard it was demanded that I commentate this tournament, given my deep insights into destiny so. yeah they they were like we need the the pressing buttons host to to give this some uh some legitimacy so <laughs> we were like all right we're, we're in there I, I basically have no no like none of the value of a commentator you know it's like they need to be entertaining articulate no insightful yeah, yeah insightful about the i'm like i literally checked none of those boxes so yeah. We'll see how I do, but I think it'll be it'll be fun. I'll probably enjoy commentating the game more than playing it. So yeah, that that might be fun, and it's yeah. gonna be fun. I, I know enough about the game where I can you know call things out. So that's gonna be very interesting. And Nick doesn't know a lot about it, but you know he's funny. I'm so literally just gonna be like, he's shooting. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, he's shooting again. <laughs> he's shooting the J. <laughs> um, but yeah, make sure you you check that out. We're gonna put it in our uh, Discord. Um, and our YouTube channel, so you guys can watch the video on demand and look forward to this because obviously um, it's one of the things we want. We talked about that we wanted to do tournaments for everybody throughout the year um, on our Discord, and we were going to start with the Street Fighter one um, presented by us. But you know, if, if you guys have any ideas about tournaments in the future that we should hold, let us know, and we'll definitely uh, try to make that happen. And the other. A quick PSA, which we wanted to give, mainly mostly me, uh, because I find this very essential, and I'm a big proponent of PlayStation Plus, is that the PlayStation Plus collection uh, on PlayStation 5 is leaving May 9th. Uh, for those of you don't that don't know, if you have a PS5, there's a PlayStation Plus collection that Sony curated to offer you about 20 games, highly acclaimed games, so you can have something to play. Um, obviously, when the PS5 came out, there wasn't a lot of things to play that you didn't have on the PS4, um, so Sony kind of made it easy for you guys to play. Um, the titles include uh, Bloodborne, Bar- uh, Batman Arkham Knight, God of War, Infamous Second Son, Monster Hunter World, uh, Ratchet and Clank, The Last Guardian, Uncharted. Uh, Last of Us Remastered, if you haven't played that. So a lot of good titles, highly acclaimed. Make sure you check that out. Um, You don't have to download them. You can just put them in your collection. So at least you have them. Uh, And like I said, May 9th is the cutoff date. So make sure you take advantage of that because I always do. Um, And that's it. What about you, Lytle? Are you yeah. going to take advantage of this <laughs> for your PlayStation uh, well, 5 I think that I, you don't play? I might, I might just go in and just go nuts and download everything or at least like redeem all of the games just because w- why not but i think i've probably already done it for for the games that i cared about but you know yeah. you, you might as well i mean that's how i got my journey through days gone through the playstation uh, plus collection, that's right so, yeah. yeah i know you're you're a big advocate of this for a very long time and influenced me to finally start taking advantage of of ps plus and just mm creating a giant library of games that maybe you'll play 
yeah. at, at some point, but and maybe with the itch for from the Destiny One v One tournament, you'll download Destiny Beyond Light, which is also free right now for the monthly PlayStation Plus uh, title. So you never know, or not. That that's an itch. <laughs> That's we'll not see. getting scratched. Listen, we'll see. We'll see after this tournament. Maybe you might get hyped. You might see some things that you're like, "Ooh, maybe this game is kind of interesting." Let me check it out. But we'll 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 discuss that next week. Okay. <laughs> However it goes. All right. Um, so we're gonna start the show. Um, the first thing we wanted to talk about is actually some late Valentine's Day content. Um, as you guys were aware, in the states, and I don't know if they celebrate it over the, in the world. It's not a big thing. It's not really a holiday, but you know, uh, somebody's got to get paid. Uh, but Valentine's Day was on the 14th. We didn't cover anything related to it because obviously there was a big Nintendo Direct and uh, we wanted to cover that and all the news that that brought about. But we did make some Valentine's Day content we're, which we're, we're going to be sharing with you right now. Uh, and one of those things was that we asked ourselves what games are good to play with your partner and what are the best co-op games. And then we wanted to talk about those games and, and what they mean to us and what, why we think these are really good games to, pay, to play with your significant other or a friend or anything like that. Or to recommend to anybody, especially for, for those people that don't play a lot of video games and might be easy to pick up. Um, so we got a bunch of games on this list. We're not going to dive deeply in, in, in detail into all the ones that, that we mentioned, but the ones that do stand out, we'll talk about more. Um, and, and you guys can pick your own from this list. And even if you have any suggestions, please suggest, uh, any ones that, that we might've missed or you think should be on this list, uh, on our discord or, or in our YouTube comments or on, on our Spotify, or everything like that. So we're going to, Talk about a couple games that we got on the list here. We got It Takes Two. We got It Way, uh, A Way Out, Luigi's Mansion, Super Mario Odyssey, Little Big Planet, uh, Nancy Drew, Phoenix Wright, anything that's like the Tet Pith like, uh, Portal 2, Lego series, Zombies Ain't My Neighbors, Soul Giant and Earl, uh, Final Fight, um, and and uh, Double Dragon. So those are, are to name a few um, that came off of the top of our heads. Um, the main thing I, I actually on this list, I put It Takes Two and A Way Out. Those are two big ones. Um, they're made by uh, Joseph Faris and his studios. Um, if you're not familiar with, he he's a bit of an indie. He does a lot of games. He's a very, you know, polarizing figure, which Nick doesn't, you know, has his own opinions on that guy. But polarizing guy. But yeah. Yeah. Um, it Takes Two. I played it with my girlfriend. Uh, it's a great game. Definitely a uh, good uh, couch co-op game. Easy to play. I streamed it as well. If if you have somebody that you're playing with that's not as familiar with video games or you know get, can't get the control scheme, it's a good game to kind of start off the bat um, to play. The story is very interesting. It did win Game of the Year at the Game Awards in 2021. Uh, so that was pretty amazing. Um, and I've been telling Nick to play it for a while, but he won't listen to me. Um, no, I tried. It just doesn't have crossplay. Yeah, it, it, that, that, that's the that's the one side, downside. It doesn't have crossplay, yeah. but you can uh, do like a, a local uh, co op. And I believe when it when it came out, you could do a thing where if somebody bought bought it, you could play uh, with them. You didn't have to buy the title as well. Same thing for a way out. That one has to do with two guys that are in prison and you know they have to find a way out <laughs> uh but that one's also good um it seems like a developing trend that, that he did uh in terms of making games where you could play with somebody else where it's easy to, to to take a hold of and just go through with it um and then the next one is nintendo focus we have luigi's mansion and super mario odyssey those are pretty big ones um i don't know if, if you played luigi's mansion i know it was uh, up there on on our spooky list for October. It's a spooky game. It's this you know it, it it's just as valuable on Valentine's Day as it is Halloween. Exactly. So uh, Nintendo's always good with their co ops. Uh, I I do like uh, Luigi's Mansion where somebody who is used to playing video games could take control of Luigi, and then somebody who might not be as used to uh, playing video games can take uh, control of. Gooigi, which is Luigi's uh, ghost version. And in Super Mario Odyssey, obviously, you can play as Mario, and then the, the second person can play as the cat. Um, do you have any memories or anything like that about these two games that, that, that you enjoy playing co-op with? Well, I, I like the games. I actually never took advantage of the, the co-op mode. So maybe that's just something I need to check out at some point. Yeah, you got to get more co-op in your life. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, well, yeah. When it I comes to never, Nintendo, yeah, I just so never really do a lot of the local co-op, I guess. Yeah, it's one of those things where until you realize that the game has it, um, you, you don't really push for it, but also like, hey, I'm bored. Do you want to play a game with me? It's one of those things. Um, yeah, and so. I think in, in Mario Galaxy 2, there was a version of that, right? Where you, I think you controlled like the star or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah in yeah. Mario Galaxy, you could do the stars. Yeah, so, so they, Nintendo, they, they do a good job of like, yeah, like one one person who's probably a little bit more adept at, at video games is controlling one element, and the other person's kind of doing some support support type role. Um, so I can see that that working pretty well. But yeah, just for some reason, never never got into checking out those modes on those games. Oh, you gotta you gotta talk to Layla and let her know you want to play some co-op stuff. Yeah, yeah, be like, hey Layla, I know you've dreamed of the day that you could play as Gooigi. <laughs> uh, hey man, you never know. It's it's the same thing. She just started playing Harry Potter, so she might well, become addicted. Well, we'll we'll get into that later. I'm I'm not convinced that's gonna convert her into being a hardcore oh. gamer. So okay, <laughs> we'll we'll see what happens. So for me, uh, so for me, it's like I think it's it's games that have more. Uh, online co-op type things uh, is kind of what I'd be looking for. Gotcha, gotcha. All right. Um, next one we wanted uh, I want to talk about was also this one is also I would say couch co-op. It would be more specifically in the couch, obviously. Um, and it's like Nancy Drew, Phoenix Wright, any type of games like that. Professor Layton that are detective games, which are easy to play if. Um, you're on the couch with a partner or even with some friends where you can uh, make the decisions in terms of like finding the clues, confronting people or anything like that. Those are pretty fun, uh, especially if you get like a big group together. Um, and then you have the other version uh, of this, which is the survival one, which is like Until Dawn, which is another one um, where you had to make decisions in, in a horror type genre. So those are pretty fun. Have you had any experiences with these in, in terms of uh, making decisions with other people, kind of doing like a group uh, survey or, or or with somebody else where it's like what should we pick no now you need to start playing with more people. <laughs> <laughs> i feel like i, I made this I'm segment learning, just for me I'm, I'm learning a lot about myself in the segment so you you only do co-op online basically well, well we'll get into some of the the titles you mentioned that are more retro titles so i think when i was much younger Local co-op was was more prevalent, and there were certain games that that worked really well with with the segment. But I think more 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 modern titles, for the most part, you know, it's basically if I'm doing local co-op, or it's more just like local multiplayer. It's more like the party games where it's you know Mario Kart, Mario Party, Super Monkey Ball. You know, it's it's those types of games as opposed to games that you need to you know, sit through and, and work through cooperatively over an extended period. So, so maybe that's, that's kind of the difference. Um, gotcha. Gotcha. All right. Well then, uh, let's move on to the next set of games. And, uh, we have little big planet Lego series. Um, those are more where you can immerse yourself in these worlds, whether Lego, whether it's star Wars, Lord of the Rings or anything like that. And then in little big planet, uh, obviously media molecule, um, very creative studio. Uh, they have uh, dreams out as well, where you can make things, and um, it's a platformer as well, so it, it's easy to use. And the sack boys and sack girls are pretty cute, so definitely something to draw people in. Um, and then the Lego series, they're fun as heck. Uh, uh, fun as heck. What am I? A five-year-old? Fun as hell. Um, I know a lot of people play them, and and they have a lot of uh, sense of humor. So it's like you're you're playing a, a uh, director's cut of, of a movie or a game, so that's pretty fun. Um, and then let's let's lead into the old school retro. Um, we have Zombies Ain't My Neighbor and Toe Jam and Earl. I played Zombies Ain't My Neighbor. Um, pretty fun game. It's definitely got that uh, horde mode, you would say, but just like old school horde mode um, where you just advance through levels and you play this kid who's zombies are his neighbors and he's just marking marking these zombies left and right <laughs> what are your vivid memories of, of zombies ain't my neighbor that's pretty much it it's a pretty it's a pretty mindless game 
it's fun. It's like you know, silly weapons and the characters are, are crazy. I remember the giant baby uh, as one specific boss, which was which was pretty funny. So I don't know. It was just fun and, and pick up and play. So I think that was a go to co op game. You know, if I had friends over, if I was at someone's house, like we would almost always be playing that. Um, the other the other addition here was was to Jam and Earl, which I actually think is. It's like it's pick up and play, but it's also like kind of hard. So, you, you, and it's also like ra- completely random too. So, it's 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 more of a focused effort. And I actually never beat the game uh, until I was in my thirties, <laughs> where I was just like, I'm beating this game at all costs, and uh, it was. You're actually- like my brain is fully developed. I can take it on now. Yeah, exactly. It was actually during like the whatever the hurricane was that we had here in in New York. Oh, Hurricane Sandy. Yeah, oh, when Hurricane when was Sandy. that? I don't even remember. But I, I basically like lost yeah. power. I lost power in my apartment and I had to go stay at my buddy's place. And we were just like looking for things to do, and we're like, you know what? Let's be Tuchi and Mineral. Well, and that's, that's a, what that's, we did. That's a good thing to do. It was very hurricane. romantic. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely, finally, you yeah. actually played a, a, a game with somebody at, at an adult age. Yeah, um, yeah. Th- these these uh, type of games where it's retro, uh, we all grew up on. Obviously, you have Mario Brothers, Super Mario World. You could pick uh, Mario or Luigi, and then when when one person uh, died, the other person would go. You also have like Donkey Kong uh, Country, where you could play as uh, Donkey Kong or Diddy Kong and switch out. Those are pretty fun. Um, the beat em ups, you have uh, Final Fight, Double Dragon, uh, Battletoads, all those games, pretty fun. And like you said, it's it's definitely a, a sign of the times where before, like you would go to your friend's house and play there, or, or they would come over to your house and, and play there, or, or you would go to an arcade and play there. Uh, who doesn't have memories of, of the Simpsons arcade games and stuff like that? Now they, you know, kind of streamline everything where you could just do everything online. Um, and it is it's still fun, but there's something about like getting a group together or just being at home and having somebody next to you. And it's easier to communicate, I would say, uh, and, and help each other out. Um, so hopefully you, you get, you know, more sessions <laughs> uh, where, where you could do some more couch co op. Yeah. Yeah, I think. It sounds like if you were to recommend, you know, tying. I think we just started talking more broadly around co-op games. But if you were to hone in specifically on best game, I don't know. Maybe it's not on Valentine's Day, but maybe it's you know around Valentine's Day or that that season. Uh, I think you you'd probably say it takes two would be your. Yeah, I would say like it's recommended it's, title for that. It's my my number one recommended overall, just because it works either way. Whether you're a veteran game gamer or whether you're somebody who's never really played video games, where once you get a hold of the controller, the inputs are very easy to kind of figure out um, and and play around with, and it's very innovative and fun. And there's a lot of mini games in there, and it just forces both of you to communicate a lot. So I think in terms of best co-op game i would say that's that's ranks high up there i'd have to rack my brain and maybe we can uh in a future episode do kind of like a legitimate list of the best co-op games but yeah it takes two is high up there for me um especially just i think the ease of of getting somebody in there and and the draw of having people play it even if you never played a video game it, it's it's fun cool yeah i think and- i I'll play it at some point. Like I'm not. It, I think it's because I was trying to play it online with none other than Brooklyn Dad. But we there's no there was no crossplay support. Maybe that's changed. I'm not sure. But we were not able to play together um, closer to when the game launched. So also, I think it's it's you should have an emotional connection. Whereas you're playing a married couple who you know, I think you're getting a divorce and get turned into a clay doll and a yarn doll. Whereas you and Brooklyn dad are just friends. So, you know, I mean, uh, I think, I think he would be very offended by that statement. I think we have a very deep emotional connection and there's a lot uh, of parallels. Yeah. But you're not getting a divorce or might be getting a divorce. Who knows? 
But yeah, it's it's definitely one of those. Um, we'll, we'll have to. I mean, check I also like to think that I'm not getting a divorce with my actual wife. So <laughs> <laughs> it's it's therapy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, but yeah, it's it's one of those uh, that that you definitely have to experience it, and I would recommend it, especially if you have a partner uh, or a friend who who's not a big video game gamer, and you want to just like, hey, check this out. You'll have fun. I think you've inspired me to check out. Luigi's Mansion. Yeah, that's also great, man. Guigi. 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 Yeah. So mainly, uh, mainly just because I want to, I just want to talk about Guigi more. It, so, is it Guigi or Guigi? Guigi. Oh, I was saying Guigi. Guigi? Um, no, that's yeah. like the, Spanish with a ch. Yeah, it's also like a fighting game player. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, All right. But, all right, so uh, uh, that does it for our Valentine's Day content. So, you know, uh, like I said, we, we like to do these holiday uh, uh, things. Or, uh, we like to do these things uh, themed around the holidays. Uh, and definitely Valentine's being like a, a you know, little partner, little co-op, little significant other. We love uh, playing games with people. So uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. If you have any thoughts on this, or if you have any games that you think we should check out or you feel are great for co-op, let us know uh, on our Discord, on our YouTube comments, um, email as well. We'll have all of that info in our show notes, so make sure you, you let us know what you think if you want. Um, all right, next thing we want to talk about is Psychonauts 2. Um, so Double Fine, the developers of Psychonauts, they released a 32-part documentary series documentary series on YouTube. Um, this is a second documentary series that they've released on game development. The first one they did for uh, Broken Age uh, a couple years back, and it was, even though the game wasn't critically acclaimed or, you know, didn't, wasn't a, a crazy system seller, the documentary itself was highly acclaimed because it just dove deeper into the development and what it like what it's like to develop a game from a bunch of different aspects and you know it just brought a lot of gamers closer to the developers um so we can understand what they're dealing with what they're doing how hard it is how hard their job is um and i think uh this one as well is doing great obviously 32 <laughs> parts is is a lot but if you're as passionate as we are about video games, I think it's definitely a check out, um, especially from Double Fine, such a, a prestigious studio with Tim Schafer and all that and, and all he's known for and all the games that they developed. I think it's definitely worth a check. I know you've seen a couple episodes. I haven't gotten around to it. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, it's great. I love uh, behind the scenes game dev content. Uh, I think this has to be the biggest launch or like series that i've ever seen for you know basically uh for one title from beginning to finish uh i can't remember i mean they must have filmed this thing over like five you know it's like it's like something crazy like how committed they were to to, to, to doing this so yeah it's 32 parts uh episode lengths are pretty pretty long like it's like maybe 30 to 40 minutes on average, something like that. So I've watched the first couple episodes. I just started episode three. Uh, this has been great to just like kind of, it's almost like, like a podcast where I just kind of have it on and I'm listening to it and while I'm doing other things. Um, and yeah, there's just like a lot of really, really interesting personalities. Of course, Tim, Tim Schafer, you know, being one of them where uh, they're just inter like an entertaining bunch of folks um uh so yeah so I'm, I'm planning on completing it uh, i might i'll take my time doing it like that's it's a lot of content to to work through but um yeah it was a great kind of thing that came out of nowhere uh and i'm very excited about it yeah and, and with these type of documentaries especially uh these days when it's so accessible for everybody to film themselves and and have uh, the content put up online. I think it, I'm all for it. Hopefully we get to see this from a lot more studios. Obviously with video game development, it takes years, uh, five, well, these days it takes a lot of years, anywhere between three to five years, um, to be in a, in a development cycle. So it's a lot of work to be put in. Obviously 
we as gamers we just play the games so we always have something to go on um whereas with with these people the developers they they're working on one thing for a bunch of years so it's it's definitely good to see them in their environment and see all the the stuff that they do and it, i think it just makes us appreciate it more even if the game's not a good game obviously uh psychonauts came out uh psychonauts 2 came out and it received a lot of award nominations and it was won a couple of awards so i think it did come out good but even if it's not a good game you can see uh, a lot of the passion that went into it and the hard work that went into it so definitely i'm looking forward to a lot more documentaries i think it it humanizes the studios and it kind of gets the gamers uh to sympathize more with the developers and and know how hard it is to make a video game so kudos to that and, and hopefully we get to see a lot more um, and then the next thing we want to talk about is a trend. And that trend is uh, a lot of PC games coming out with performance issues. Uh, and one of the reasons we want to talk about this is because uh, Wild Hearts just came out and the internet uh, was in an uproar uh, with all the, the negative performance issues that it had. Um, we also had Hogwarts Legacy recently came out, had uh, PC performance issues. Uh, and Callisto Protocol and Forspoken, which we talked about a couple of episodes back, also had performance issues on PC. Um, so I won't talk too much about the the effects of the performance issues of Wild Hearts until the end of the episode in my closing thoughts. But definitely I can see that um, the game itself definitely, I don't know if it needed more time in, in the oven or if it was just that they didn't realize it was going to come out like this. But I, I, I do have performance issues. I, I was able to do a couple of tricks on on my pc to kind of optimize it but it does suck that i have such a high-end uh video graphics card and i'm still having issues and all that stuff i have a high-end pc i shouldn't have issues for a launch game unless i'm trying to like do something that the game's not supposed to do uh hogwarts legacy as well i know it had its issues um and callisto protocol and forspoken definitely needed a bunch of patches the funny thing is that from all the reviews and everything they seem to be performing well on Xbox and PlayStation, so they're definitely optimized for it. So it's kind of weird that they're not optimized for PC, um, especially when you've had so much time. In the case of Wild Hearts, I wouldn't blame the developers too much. I know they are working with EA, but uh, Koei Tecmo, I think it is their first foray, one, into this type of series, two, I think into PC in general. They're mostly known for the Samurai Warriors series, so I don't think they needed to put as much work i would say as this uh game is to be such a technical uh powerhouse um so it is kind of weird i'm not trying to give them a pass by any means because obviously if i buy a game they want i want it to perform at its best they want but yeah with, with these modern games that they, they always need patches they want patches so it does kind of suck um what are your thoughts especially you being such a pc snob and all that it, um, I'm, I'm i'm devastated i feel like my whole life has been a lie where there's now this, you know, I'm seeing a lot of different conversations around where people are like, Hey, like I now need to buy the console version of a game to get like the best experience, which is to me is complete lunacy. Uh, but I think that that's like, I, I agree. Like that's kind of what I've been feeling over the last, you know, you know, many months, like this isn't like that recent of a trend, but um, I think it's something with these last few major releases where it's like, okay, like what's going on here where I tried, I tried wild hearts through the 10 hour game pass demo. And I think it was equal parts where just, I just, the intro just didn't click with me. Like I just w wasn't engaged with it. And, but on top of that, like it didn't look great lots of frame rate hitches and, and, uh, so it just wasn't running great at all. Um, Hogwarts legacy was, so I did, I did get, you know, download that. I played it a little bit with, with my wife where the idea there was, uh, I guess maybe that was meant to be like our val Valentine's day experience where, which the game isn't designed to be that at all, but she's a big Harry Potter fan. I know nothing about Harry Potter, but I like, I like games that are developed by Avalanche, so my intention was actually just to watch her, watch her play that, and maybe try to be helpful every once in a while. 
Uh, so we did that and we had a good time. We, we made it through the intro, but there's like insane performance issues with like, even she was like, what is like, what is going on with, with this game? Like, is it, is it okay? And, um, so it was that one. And then, um, I haven't played these games, but also, you know, cluster protocol and Forspoken were getting dunked on quite a bit with PC performance issues. Uh, I need to I need to check. I think, with exception of Wild Hearts, I think all those game all the other games are Unreal Engine based, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's kind of interesting. Where <laughs> there's a common denominator of, of of Unreal Engine, which you would kind of expect, just given where that's coming from. Like you'd think Unreal Engine would be very friendly with 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 pc versions um but there seems to be something going on where there's pretty consistent frame rate issues and stuttering and and all these other things um i think even i saw some reports of like hi-fi rush i don't know if that's unreal engine but like people were having some some kind of like stuttering issues with that game i didn't notice them so maybe i need to get deeper into the game but so yeah it's kind of it's kind of shitty, right? Because I spent a an asset of money on a thirty eighty RTX thirty eighty rig. Uh, so because you know there's a big investment with that, you kind of expect to get a get more meaningful performance out of the titles versus just a PlayStation Five. But we're not kind of. I'm not feeling that, right? Like, and, and I think you're even kind of pissed that you were like, oh, maybe I should have just got Wild Hearts on PlayStation because that would have been a better experience. Yeah, and I mean, like, I'm still, like, on the on the fence. I, I'm, I'm a big PC gamer. I, I do play a lot of games on PC, but I'm also still a big PlayStation gamer. I like playing games on PlayStation, downloading them on PlayStation. Um, and when it comes to these, uh, the last couple of times that there, there's a title where it, it releases on PlayStation and PC as well, I usually... Uh, especially if it's multiplayer, I kind of steer towards PC because a lot of my friends are on, on PC and I do want to take advantage of my 3080 as well. But in this case, you know, I, I was disappointed when it was optimized better for PlayStation. There is a patch coming out next week. Hopefully that resolves a lot of issues. Um, like I said, I'm enjoying my time with the game after I was able to kind of maneuver it and, and tweak some things around to optimize it better. But this just kind of drives me to think like is it the developers that aren't uh checking everything to make sure it's right is it just that the games are too powerful like what what's the issue here because it's happening too often and kind of in the future going forward it's kind of going to want to make me get it on ps5 which obviously it's going to be okay for them anyways because i'm going to get the title but i i do want to experience it on pc where i paid for so much money for to have a crazy machine, I want it to, to work. And it's just insane that it, that it doesn't. So, yeah, so definitely, I hope, uh, I hope, I hope this is a trend that gets corrected. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, I'm going to be yelling at you about PC master race all the time. Yeah. PC not master yeah. Race. I mean, you know, obviously there's performance generally speaking, or the expectation at the, is that there's performance benefits to playing on PC. If you have a, uh you know strong strong spec uh there's also just the you know you, you basically like buy it once and it's on that platform forever so if you buy something on steam you don't have to worry about you know P playstation 6 and whether the version of they bought for ps4 ps5 is compatible like it's always you know a, a consistent catalog is is another value but so to me, it was always both of those things, right? Where I like just buying the game once and I didn't have to worry about spanning different generations of hardware. Um, but I hope we don't lose the, the the performance. Like that would be, that'd be awful. Yeah. And it, it's like, so it's like, I wonder if it's like a, because they've uh, pretty recently transitioned from Unreal Engine 4 to 5. Like, I wonder if there's something going on there where, People are just, it'll just take some time for people to kind of fully, fully figure out and optimize working with Unreal Engine 5. Um, I don't know. 
And the other big thing is when you think about it is a lot of these game sales have to do with um, word of mouth. Obviously, advertising plays a huge part. The more you see the game, the more you're like, hey, let me, maybe I should pick this up. But word of mouth is also a strong driver, especially in the video game community, because we play with friends and we like our friends to tell us what games they're playing and should we get it. Um, I know uh, one of our good friends uh, on Discord, Caesar, got this game because he liked playing Monster Hunter, and I told him I was going to get this, so he got it. But unfortunately, he hasn't been able to play um, that much with me, and because of the performance issues, uh, even with the little uh, tweaks that I told him to make, he's still having issues, so he's just going to wait for the patch. But it does ha drive down the interest. Um, and, and in these cases, with these four games, Wild Hearts, Hogwarts, Callisto Protocol, and Forspoken, it's a little bit of half and half where Forspoken and Callisto Protocol didn't get like crazy good reviews, so you don't worry about it too much. But Hogwarts Legacy and Wild Hearts, they did get good reviews, and the only really knock on them is that the performance issue. So um, definitely you feel like the, the, the sales could probably be higher if the game was was uh optimized and both games were optimized better but i think they still sell well obviously hogwarts legacy with the backing of of the hogwarts uh franchise uh harry potter franchise i think that's gonna still do astronomically good but i do feel bad for wild hearts it being a new franchise um i hope this doesn't affect it and it doesn't affect any future plans that they have for it especially with ea and we all know how kind of ea is and and their single player co-op uh, mentality. All right. Um, and then the last bit of news we want to talk about is just a couple uh, release dates for a couple games. We have Liza P. That one just got a release window for August. Uh, for those unfamiliar, that's the one where you play like Metal Pinocchio. It's, yeah, it's Bloodborne meets Pinocchio. Yeah. Is so the easiest way to think about it. Looks pretty interesting. Obviously, uh, Nick and I are big fans of that uh, Souls genre type games. Um, so we're excited to see that this got a release window and we can't wait to check it out. And then the other one is the Diablo 4 beta. Um, I know a lot of people have been hearing uh, of some early builds of people playing Diablo and they're enjoying it. But basically, if you uh, pre-order the game, you'll have access to the beta from March 17. Uh, oh, uh, from March 17 to the 19th. And then everyone else will get access from the 24th to the 26th. So that's pretty exciting. Um, especially with Diablo, I think the last one was really good, even though it took a while for it to become good after a couple of updates. But this one has already been having a lot of praise from the community, from everybody that has been playing it. Um, and it's another great co-op, you know, multiplayer type of game. Uh, are you excited yeah. for these? Yeah, I mean, I think I think both of them. So yeah, it was good good to get some more information around when to expect them to launch. Uh, for Lies of P, I hope I hope it's good. Like for me, it's it's kind of filling the void of uh, when are we going to see the next like big Soulsborne type game? And I think the next big thing is probably going to be Elden Ring DLC. Uh, That's who, where you're wrong, buddy, because the next Soulsborne game is Wulong Fallen Dynasty. There's a demo coming yeah. out towards the end of February, which I forgot to say, but that was that was the other thing I forgot in the in my early PSA. I was going to say there's a Wulong Fallen Dynasty demo coming out soon, and for those who love Soulsborne, check it out. I don't know why you haven't checked it out. Yeah, well, we'll see. Um... I mean, I'm, I'm, I'll probably, I'll probably try it out uh, for sure. But in terms of the one that I'm most, most interested in, I think Liza P looks, looks more interesting to me, mainly because a lot of people are um, comparing it with Bloodborne, which is, I think, one of the only two from software game that I haven't beaten because I think the game is basically unplayable. Uh, on PlayStation, so to me, this is like until there's an actual proper Bloodborne remaster, this is like the next best thing that I that I can get. So, so that's why I'm like prioritizing that over over Wolong. But yeah, I think Wolong could be could be a solid title. We'll see. Um, and then for for Diablo, yeah, I'm really excited about that just because I'm uh, just with with game night every week. We're just foaming at the mouth for multiplayer, you know, online co-op titles. So if this ends up being a good title, like it's definitely something that we're going to be 
probably I could see us playing like a lot of that. Um, yeah, I'm debating. I'll probably just wait for the general access as opposed to, you know, trying to pre-order it or whatever and getting earlier access. So I don't know. Let me. I got to think about that a little bit more. But um, I definitely want to play play the beta. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there's definitely going to be a bunch of other things we could be playing in the meantime. So just waiting a couple days for the for the general beta will be all right. As yeah. far as Liza P, I mean, it's Bloodborne. It's those are big shoes to fill. So I don't know if they will be full. But the good thing is, as you as as you had mentioned to me before we started recording, was that it's going to be on Game Pass. So you know, no money wasted on your end. It's except free for that monthly monthly fee that you pay it's free <laughs> all right um so that does it for all the news and topics that we wanted to talk about and we will be moving on to some closing thoughts i'll start it off and my main closing thought is wild hearts so like i said earlier when we talked about the performance issues i did i was having uh performance issues luckily i was watching uh one of my favorite destiny streamers king gothalian and he was also playing wild hearts um and he he wasn't he was having issues in the beginning when he started, but he was able to optimize it uh, through the display settings and he told his community how to do it and I kind of just did the same thing and the game was able to stabilize for me. Um, I'm still having a little bit of issues if I try to alt tab um, my like if I try to do something else on my computer while I'm playing the game and I go back into the game, it will lag a little bit for about five to ten minutes before it stabilizes again so that is a little bit annoying hopefully with next week's patch it fixes it and i can play with my friends without having to worry about switching out or anything like that but besides that i think i i like the game i'm really enjoying it i'm a big monster hunter fan i think uh this is a good uh other series that i, I can get into i like the monsters so far that i'm in i'm in chapter two i've hunted about 10 different monsters pretty unique way to fight um the main thing about this game is the karakuri which you can build in the battlefield which i think is a definitely a game changer in, in terms of gameplay i'm enjoying it building walls so when the monsters uh trying to crash into me they can just crash into that and i can do dps uh building a giant hammer to bonk them in the head with it uh, my little Sukumo helpers are helping out. Um, traversing the world is pretty fun too because you can build uh, structures, uh, whether it's like a zip line or, or hooks or anything like that, um, or a propeller to kind of fly in the air. Those are pretty cool. And another thing is that everything stays in your world. So if you build something, it's there unless the monster destroys it. So I think that's pretty unique, um, kind of fun way to, to have your world always be kind of changing and also being the same. Um, so I'm enjoying myself with the game. Obviously, I do want them to send that performance uh, patch. I can't believe it's going to take them a week to issue it but they do say that that should take care of a lot of the issues that people have been having whether it's audio whether it's performance but besides that i think it's a good game if you're a big monster hunter type fan uh you should definitely check it out and i can't wait till they do that because i knew i know uh we played a lot of monster Hunter together i think we will be playing a, a, a wild hearts for a bit at least until the next big thing comes out uh are you did you, I know you only played it for like an hour or whatever it was, but besides the performance, like, I know the story, the story's just bland. You're just out there hunting monsters. It's not going to give you much on that, but like, what, did you think you, you were going to like it or anything like that? Yeah, I, I tried, I can't remember, I guess it's like the first major, major boss. So it's, I don't even know if it was an hour. It might've just been 30 minutes or so, but just the, I thought the first half hour was just very very bland and i was very annoyed by the by the performance so i just i just said i'm i'm gonna hold hold off on this um i have to imagine it gets like way more interesting with like all the other mechanics and and and, and all that stuff um so i didn't i didn't get into any of that but i was just pretty pretty turned off by it um basically immediately yeah, I think definitely once once they do the performance patch, you, you probably still have a couple hours left on that trial. So definitely when because you, uh, you only you're only able to use a katana in the beginning through the tutorial. 
really the whole beginning until you fight that big ice monster is a tutorial. Um, but the, de the game definitely opens up when you're out there in the world, in the main world, going around and building uh, more Karakuri, do doing the, the concept of the game and the gameplay. So Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. I'll, um, I guess I'll just wait and see on, on the patches and whether that's actually sol solving the issue, but... Um, I, don't know. I mean, if, it, if anything, I'll be so overpowered by the time you, you get in the game, then we'll just breach I mean, that things. was exactly the case with Monster Hunter as well. You were like, yeah. I already put in a thousand hours into it by the time I started playing it. So that makes just, sense. Just ride my coattails. Yeah. You're fine. <laughs> um, and then the other thing, I, I did play a lot more Ghost of Tsushima Legends. I actually enjoyed it. I didn't think I was going to enjoy it uh, uh, much more. I was able to level up all the f classes. I got more in-depth into the system, into the stories. Um, I honestly regret not getting this game when it came out because I was waiting for them to, to release it on PlayStation and do a, a, a PS5 upgrade version. So I, I'm kind of regretting that I didn't get it when it came out so I could play with when the community was bigger. I think it's still a big community, but... Obviously, when the game came out, there was probably a lot more people playing it. So you were able to do a lot more of the raids, the survival, or the or the rivals, which is their uh, PvP type. So uh, if anybody else out there wants to play Tsushima Legends, hint, hint, Nick, who says that he was going to get to it eventually, uh, at, at his pace, it's going to be next year. I got, an, I got an update for you on that. Uh, so we'll, we'll get into that when it's my turn for closing thoughts. Yeah. And then as far as watching anything, besides the Super Bowl, which was a good game, except for the end, because we all know how it ended, um, uh, on like a womp womp type. I don't know how it ended. It ended on a... <laughs> Basically, it was very anticlimactic at the end. Um, it was a good game, though, uh, up, up to like the last four minutes. The Super Bowl commercial sucked. So nothing good. The trailers that they showed, nothing new. The Flash, the Flash trailer was pretty good, so I enjoyed that. Um, really good. Uh, really, uh, I enjoyed that a lot. It's good to see Michael Keaton back in the Batman suit. Um, whatever they end up figuring out. Also, Ben Affleck is in there. Uh, Ezra Miller as the Flash. We also see Supergirl and General Sot. So that was pretty good. Uh, to see. Um, I'm excited about that whenever that comes out. And uh, I also watch Indiana Jones because for some reason I've been seeing a lot of Harrison Ford on, on things. So I was like, let me go watch Indiana Jones. Uh, so I watched the first three Indiana Jones. We don't talk about the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, so that doesn't exist. Um, and that's it for me. What about you? Cool. Uh, so I think I mentioned I, I played Hogwarts or at least kind of the in intro to Hogwarts with, with my wife. Uh, I think she will probably stop playing. <laughs> like she, you know, she like was like, oh, this is cool, but she's just like not a big gamer. So I think I'll, I was watching her play it. So I was able to at least follow, you know, what's going on and how to set things up. But uh, I think I'll probably need to take, take over to actually complete the game. So Damn, that kind of sucks because I, I feel like, you know, if you're a gamer and and you're a big Harry Potter fan, the the reactions that I've gotten is that they really like what they did with Hogwarts. Like you feel like you're in Hogwarts. Uh, oh yeah, no, she. I mean, she she got some. We got some big reactions out of her. Like I think in the intro or very early on, you like go to the bank, which is a big thing, and she was like all excited. She's like, oh my god, it's the it's the bank or i'm like okay <laughs> it's the bank yeah yeah and, and uh i like how you know nothing about harry potter so you're like it's a it's just a yeah. bank and but, she's like but, oh no it's green i think it's like green green girls or some shit like that i forget the, the name but yeah it's like but she was bank. she was able to you know she just kind of knew what it was before they even told you what it was and then um and then she got real pumped when they mentioned the the sorting hat ceremony and she even she even dropped a let's fucking go like i was oh, like Whoa, are you i was like are you are you an actual gamer or uh so yeah i could i could see i'm sure there was a lot a lot more of those moments for people familiar with the harry potter franchise so so that'll all be lost on me but um again i'm still confident i'll enjoy the games just because i like I like their other games and this seems to be the most polished you know avalanche avalanche title so 
Yeah, this one might be better where she watches you play. Maybe, yeah, She can maybe. tell you the Harry Potter But then stuff. she's... she's yeah, I, I don't think that'll be engaging enough for her. I don't know. Maybe we'll try switch the roles around and, and see if that works. But um, but that's, you know, more or less what we did this last week. And then I got real, real in the Genshin Impact. Uh, yeah, you would not stop talking about it in the chat. Yeah. I think this is Deepaz's fault. I'm trying to remember like why I even got back into the game. I think he it's Deepaz's it. and and Henry's fault. <laughs> well, Henry, Henry's been talking. He talks about it all the time. I think it was it was. Um, I think Deepaz trying the game out for the first time, and then uh, as I was looking into it, and I think I made a comment about this in last week's episode, but I discovered that there's there's a trading card game inside the game. Which is something, which I just love that for some reason, and it's. Uh, I was a big fan of Gwen inside of The Witcher. I was a big fan of Triple Triad and Final Fantasy fourteen online, and uh, so when I found out about this game, I think it's. Called, I forgot what it's called. It's like something something TC. Like they call it TCG, you know, in, in the game. Uh, so it's pr- pretty shameless. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, I think it's actually my favorite out of all of these types of trading card games inside games. I think it's actually my favorite game just in terms of the rules or whatever. So so that was my hook was playing the game, really enjoying it. And then you just start going around and collecting cards and challenging people and, and all that. So I was doing a lot of that this week. Uh, and then because Damn, I was doing I that... You. They got you with like game inception, playing the game within the game. Yeah, it's so weird. I guess I just like the. I don't really like playing standalone. You know, like so, if like Marvel Snap, even when they carved out Gwent into into being its own title, I thought I was gonna love that, but I just I just couldn't get into it. So I think I just need I just need like the broader world to to be in, where it's just like a thing that you can do inside of inside of a world um but yeah so because i was doing that i just started playing you know the actual the rest of the actual genshin impact game as well so i have a ton of i haven't played the game that much in i don't know like two years or three years maybe so there's like a ton of of content to catch up on so yeah i've been having a really good time with that uh and the game is, it, it kind of reminds me when I was playing Final Fantasy XIV where I would be playing that game but also watching stuff. Like, I feel like it's a good game to multitask where you don't, it's pretty chill, sometimes kind of mindless with the stuff that you're doing. So I'm almost always watching something else. And this week was uh, basically like the last hurrah for Street Fighter V. So the Capcom Cup has been going on. Uh, basically all week, uh, the, the finals, uh, is tonight. So that'll be on in a few hours. And then earlier on the week, they had the, the last chance qualifier tournament where they just had a bunch of people playing for the last spot into the tournament. And then they were also wrapping up the, the street fighter league, which is more of the, the team based, uh, competition. So it's been super heavy on on street it's been a great week for watching street fighter matches and uh the top 16 for the individual players is is like it looks great it's like it's insane so it's going to be an awesome an awesome finale so so i think i've been i've been catching up on on that too i'm excited you know a lot of heavy hitters in there we got idom men rd shout out to the dominicans always representing in in street fighter so super super hyped you know also warming up it is the last hurrah before street fighter 6 becomes the the big thing so well also uh evo they got it in evo but this is like the last capcom cup yeah the last uh, official capcom one yeah yeah, it'll still it'll still be. Yeah, I guess Evo, it, might, it might be both. It's definitely Evo Japan, and then maybe probably also Evo in Vegas. I think 
it'll be Street Fighter Five for that, depending on it, it, it's got to be right because Street Fighter or Evo will probably be. It's like August. It's only a month or two. Yeah, after yeah, yeah. The, so the it's, release, it's so. Yeah. So I wonder what they'll do with that. Um, but yeah, the last kind of formal like Capcom sponsored um, event. So, but it's been it's been great. So that's pretty much it. It's been. Genshin trading card game while watching Street Fighter matches. It's been it's been great. And then also some of the Double Fine, which I mentioned earlier, but some of the Double Fine documentary stuff, I threw that in there as well. I was basically watching that before the Capcom Cop stuff stuff started. And what about your Ghost of Tsushima thing? Well, that's why I, I didn't play Ghost of Tsushima. Oh, I thought you had news about it, not the... No, it's, more, the it's, more, there's an, it. no yeah. it's more there's an excuse as to why I haven't been playing Ghost of Tsushima. It's because I've been playing so much well, so much Genshin yeah. Impact. Because before, I think it was... Um, before I got like deep into Genshin again, my plan was finally beat Final Fantasy X, which I'm basically at the final boss, beat God of War... Which I'm like maybe a little over halfway through it, uh, and then Hi-Fi Rush, and then Ghost of Tsushima. So it's like that was the the slate, and then Genshin has just gobbled up all my gaming hours, and it'll probably be like that for like another week or so. Uh, that's generally the way I play the game, where it's like I kind of go all in for a couple weeks, and then I kind of get bored and play it again a couple years later well now i don't feel as bad as uh when when we were supposed to play final fantasy 14 together and we didn't it was like the same thing <laughs> no yeah no yeah no yeah i don't agree well, well we'll see we'll see if we ever get to play together well or would you play genshin no i, I you, think it's so it I, would, uh, I would be consumed by it so yeah so yeah, well, I wasn't sure what you were going to say, but I was going to tell you, like, you would actually love this game. <laughs> and I and I don't know if I recommend that you play it because of that. Like, I think it might be... Yeah, I mean, my foray into MMOs last year took me out for, a couple, for like There's, two months, two, you know, three months. Lots of, lots of gathering and crafting weapons and... You know, it's all, I'm all, already all of your favorites. It in my head. All of your yeah. favorites, yeah. And it's animated. Oof. It's a it's a stunning like it just looks incredible. Um, even though it's capped, it's capped at sixty FPS on the PC version, which is kind of funny because it's like I think it's at I'm pretty sure it runs at like one twenty on mobile, but for some reason the PC version's still still capped. But even with the even at sixty FPS, it just looks it's super smooth and performance issues looks incredible. Yeah, there's like zero performance issues, so it's probably like. <clears throat> I don't know. It's hard to describe. It's just a very visually you know, beautiful game. So I'll just wait to the next uh, HoYoVerse game, the the one with like the 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 wolf and the bear. Or the whatever. bear, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think that's more meant to be like sci-fi. Yeah, I'll wait for that one. Well, yeah. Oh. Uh, or like, is it cyberpunk? Or I, I don't know. Yeah, it's like sci-fi cyberpunk. I'd yeah. rather deal with that than like fantasy. Even though I like yeah. both, but I yeah. would rather do sci-fi. I was actually thinking about, I'm like, oh my god, what happens when that game comes out, and do they have it designed in a way where, like, you almost kind of play both games, at the, like, you're just all in on Hoyoverse titles, because, I don't games know. Are games are addicting, yeah. my friend. Games yeah. are addicting. And that's why we do a podcast. Um, but that does it for us on uh, Pressing Buttons, episode 53. Thank you for joining us. Don't forget to check out our Discord if you haven't. Make sure you join the community for all the wonderful things that we do and we will be doing in the future. And also, check out uh, the video on demand of whatever the tournament turns into. I'm pretty sure that's going to be pretty fun. And we'll see you on next week's episode. I'm Hugo. Bye. I'm Nick. Later.